is like you, O Lord, among the gods, who is like you, Lord, of that in part because if you look in the Revelation text, it says that all the nations of the world are going to get drawn into this. So there's a body, something of a legislative body, so I asked him from his perspective as a former ambassador to the United States and as the current deputy foreign minister, why does he think that the United Nations is so against Israel? Because the truth of the matter is Israelis, Jews aren't a bad lot at the end of the day. We have our scoundrels, we have our Bernie Madoffs, and we deal with not a horrible people, and this is not a horrible, uh, you know, it, 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 it's not an apartheid state that's fantasy. Uh, I ask him, I says, well, why is it that, that, from his perspective, Israel always draws chagrin? His response was that if you look at Israel, Israel is surrounded by 22 uh, Muslim states, that no matter what Israel does, the facts be damned, it doesn't matter. Whatever Israel does, it's going to be condemned by those 22 states, period. And then he said, when you figure that those 22 states have uh, agreements, alliances, diplomatic, economic, trade and the like, with, with some 50, 70, 80 other countries that are in bed with them. So whichever way they go, there's going to be 70, 80 other countries that are going to go along with them irrespective of the facts. So from his perspective, uh, whatever Israel does when it comes to the United Nations, there's going to be a hundred countries against it, period. You know, sometimes if you've ever had an experience in court, and I'm finishing with this, uh, sometimes in a courtroom, truth can be the first casualty. It's a question of who does the better lawyering, uh, it, it, it can become a dog and pony show, and truth, as I say, can be the first casualty. Well, it seems so much the case in the way that Israel's treated in any case, in some, in closing, finally. When I look in the Revelation text about Armageddon, it does talk about a nation from just on the other side of uh, the Euphrates being drawn into this conflagration here, the Armageddon conflict. And it's interesting, it seems that that very male may be at least something like what we're looking at now in modern Iran. And beyond that, he also talks about the kings of the earth being drawn into this vortex as well. And it seems as well that unfairly and unreasonably, 
that the nations of the earth seem predisposed to be disdainful toward Jews. That's always been the case since Jews have been on planet earth. Uh, we've drawn chagrin and uh, it, it seems to be more spiritual than material. And now that there's a nation of Jews, then collectively it draws even more energy its way. But in any case, in Revelation, it does talk about the kings of the earth going to get the Jews by the throat. We're seeing that in the world today. And it does talk about an Armageddon, some kind of Iranian outfit that comes into the region. And it seems that we're uh, preciously close to something like that. So in any case, when you look here, you can see this is known historically to be a great battlefield, a battleground. And this is a great fort. We walk up this way, you can see stables and other sorts of things, but now I'll let the real expert give us.